You're ready to start on the blackjack game, but you're not sure where to start. Uh, that's very reasonable because there's a lot of things you need to do to make blackjack work. Let's first start by looking at this blackjack rules link right here. I already have it opened. And if you haven't seen or played blackjack before, I strongly recommend you watch the video down here. It's about two pages down on this page here. I'm just going to go over the basic rules at the top and there's much more detailed explanations below. So your goal in blackjack is to beat the dealer's hand without going over 21. Uh, if you go over 21, it's called busting. So if you have 22 or more, uh, also the dealer could have 22 or more and either way uh, you bust, which means you can't win. Uh, you'll receive two cards at the beginning of each round. You'll add up the values of those cards. Now, how values work, cards 2 through 10 have their face value, so you can use the regular their regular value. King, Queen, and Jack are worth 10. Aces are tricky. They're either 1 or 11. I'll talk about how to decide which one. Uh, for now, I would just count them as 1 until I, have the, until I go into more detail about how to know it's an 11. I'll give you a quick hint. If you have two aces in your hand, they can't both count for 11. So if the counting an ace as an 11 makes you bust, then you would count that ace as a one instead. The dealer draws two cards. Uh, the, game of the, uh, the aim of the game is to beat his hand without going over 21. If you would like the dealer to deal you another card, you tell him hit. If you do not want to be dealt another card, you stand. So this is where the player makes a choice right here. Also, there's betting that happens, which I don't see in these rules. Uh, so the winner of the round is whoever has the highest hand without going bust. All right. I'm looking for the... Okay, so I saw the betting described in the video. So the first thing you have to do before the cards are dealt is place a bet. Now, casinos have minimum bets, and they have maximum bets, but most of us won't be near able to pay the maximum bet. So for us, they don't. there's no practical maximum bet. Let's look at the code I gave you now. In the public static void main in Lab 6 Blackjack, all you need to do here is make a new game object right here, and then call game.playGame. So let's go ahead and look at what these do. So here is game.java that I gave you. So first let's look at all the fields. So you have a player, which is called one. So that's the actual player that's gonna be uh, playing where, where you get to make choices by typing in keys on your keyboard. There's a dealer, I've also made a player uh, because the dealer is gonna need things like uh, to get the total value of their cards to compare to your to yours. Uh, I had a draw pile. Notice I don't have a discard pile. What I decided to do is throw the cards away instead of collect them into another hand or another pile. Uh, and you could use hand or pile here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, hand and pile are pretty similar. So we have to read input from the keyboard. That's where the scanner in comes from, and I just put final here because once I set it in this line 19, I don't need to set it a second time. So that's okay to be final. I could have made the minimum bet final, maybe, um, but I decided not to. And there's a minimum to stand is 17. When you read more of the blackjack rules, you'll understand that's when the dealer has 17 or more, they stand. All right, here's the constructor. I initialize the scanner. I do that first so I could immediately read in a name. So I just put the default here as myself. And then I'm going to prompt the user to enter the name, read in the uh, what they type, and set that equal to name. Then I create a new player with that name. Now, this could be annoying when you run this lots of times because it's gonna you're going to have to keep typing your name in. And if you comment that out it'll still work because it, it will no longer ask for your name or read in 
what you type. It'll just set the name and obviously put whatever name you want here. You don't have to use my name. So then once we have name, we make a new player. Here I make a dealer. Notice both of these are constructors right here because it has the word new in front of it. This right here, this constructor is the original player constructor. Uh, this one right here takes 100, which is the initial money that player has to bet with. Uh, and you want to make sure whatever your minimum bet is, I set it to 10, that you make sure you give your player significantly more than the minimum bet, maybe 10 or 20 times more than the minimum bet. Uh, if you give them the same amount as the minimum bet, if, as soon as they lose, if they lose the first hand, the game's over because they have no money left. So I make a dealer, a player called dealer, a player called one, and then I made a draw pile. Now, in this game, there's lots of rounds. So you're going to need to uh, deal cards every single round, which is why I didn't put any of the deal logic in the constructor, because you're going to have to deal many, many times, and you're going to have to shuffle many times uh, before you deal. So that is the constructor. Now, inside the play game, this line right here is not that necessary because we only have one player. But if I was going to have more than one player, I, I built this code so that it could work for more than one player. Notice that player is used three times down below. And let's look at that. We, on line 34... We get the player's bet on 41. We take the player's turn where it's going to ask the player, do you want to hit stand uh, or double down if you're doing the express challenge, but just worry about hit and stand. And then the last method that uses the player is handle bet, meaning you're either going to pay, pay the player for winning. Uh, if they tie, they get their bet back. And if they lose, you take their bet and they get nothing. Uh, and then at the end of the round, you're going to collect the cards. So these three lines are the three that take explicitly the player object. And let's go over the rest of this. I decided to reshuffle every single round. This code right here represents one round of blackjack. And until you run out of money, you can play as many rounds as you want. The casinos never close. Uh, so this is going to keep going. And then I already wrote your is done method and it's basically going to re return. I think it's true when your uh, the player's money is zero or less than minimum bet actually. Okay. So you reshuffle and then deal. Uh, you could technically just do, you could shuffle inside your deal cards method and you can eliminate this if you want to. That's totally fine. Now, how do you deal cards? We'll cover these individually, uh, but basically it's going to do what, what you saw in the video. Take the player's turn. Now, take the dealer turn. Notice I don't put dealer in here because there's only one dealer. You can't have two or three or four dealers. You could have two or three or four players, which is again why I set player. I make this basically, this is a temporary variable player that equals the one player that you built in the constructor. If you had two players, you would basically do a for loop where you would get the bet from each player. You would take the turn of each player and you would handle the bet of each player. All right, so we take the dealer turn. Now the dealer turn, there's no input. It's all just uh, your dealer either hits or stands depending on how much they have. And that is if they have 17 or more, they stand less than 17, they hit. It's that simple for the dealer turn. There's still some code that goes in there, but that's the logic. I have a couple of print lines just to space out the uh, the output here. Handle bets where you either pay, pay the player, take their money or tie, and then collect the cards. What I did for collect the cards, I just threw all the cards away, meaning I cleared out all the hands of the two players and this draw pile, I cleared them all. And then so that's what I did here. So I have no cards once this method is done. And then when I get back, you do have to take the bet before you deal any cards. And then I did a reshuffle, which actually inside creates a new deck. 
shuffles, and then sends it all to the draw pile. Then in deal cards, it deals cards just like the video, and then it keeps going on and on and on. At the very end, we're gonna display the score. When you are done, we'll display the score so you get to see how much the player has at the end. And this is where you see the walking away with $40. So next video, we'll go into more of the detail of how you would write some of these methods.